All right, good morning, everyone. Um, let's start off with this honesty. We're about to talk about honesty, which we presume to be a good thing. Honesty is the best policy, right? But um, why well, do imagine this? Imagine your girlfriend or boyfriend, um, or if you don't have one, imagine your boss, or if you're single and unemployed, imagine your uh, flatmate sends you uh, this message. Um, oh yeah, that's the title. Anyway, imagine this person sends you this message. It goes, hey, can I be 100% honest with you? Dot, dot, dot. Would you be excited? Or anxious? Would you expect the next message to be positive or negative? Um, I posed this question a few weeks ago on Instagram, and uh, this is what everyone else said. Someone that statement. Eighty-four percent of them say it's the next thing is probably negative, which you know it's a funny thing because we assume honesty is this beautiful, wonderful thing. We we um, impart this value in our children and and so on. And, but when you hear this, you just hear you feel this thing in your in your chest. Um, and also just being, stating it like that is sort of like uh, I remember like a few years ago, uh, Pizza Hut I think or Domino's or someone like started these commercials that that went. Now with 100% pure beef pepperoni, which uh, to me made me think, well, what was it before? <laughs> what percentage were you at before these ads came out? Um, so we've we've reached this point where, um, for whatever reason, the the default in our heads is not quite complete honesty, where we, whether we're not honest with ourselves. Um, and we assume that everyone else is the same, but sort of, we're, we're slightly um, aware that what we receive isn't always completely honest. Um, but what I realized, there was a time when being completely honest was sort of uh, accepted. Um, and that was about, like when you're a kid, when you're a little kid, and you can sort of say whatever you want, and it's fine. Like, I, as a three-year-old, could have pointed at an uncle and asked my parents why he didn't have any hair. And that would be fine. That would be cute. Um, as a grown-up, if I did that, if um, I asked why this one person can't fit in a single chair, I wouldn't, that would not be acceptable. Um, and I realized, honesty is a lot like being naked. Um, when you're a kid, you can be naked. You can, I can rush out of the shower um, at row or, or bath at three years old, run around the living room when there are guests around, and that would be fine, that would be cute. My parents might even take pictures and show their friends, and that would be totally okay. As a full grown adult, if I walk out of the shower, strutting my stuff, wet, no towel, nothing, and I walk in the living room, say hi, and then get food from the fridge later on, and um, I might have ruined a perfectly good dinner. Um, and with honesty, that's sort of the case. It's, there's, a, there's a time when it's totally acceptable and, and, and good and even expected, but then, just like being naked, the older you get, the more complicated it becomes. We sort of have to navigate it. Um, so, I'm, I was, I've been thinking about this shift and this trajectory, and the, around the time that nudity becomes a little a little less inherently beautiful is, let's say, around the time when hormones start flowing in your body or when, when that puberty sets, which is coincidentally also around the time when honesty becomes less of a cut and dry issue. Um, I think it has a lot to do with the time when you become aware of the concept of cool, where you go to school and you become aware of like, there are cool kids, and there are not cool kids and you discover that your honesty might not lead to the most positive results. Sometimes if you disclose that you like a certain show, that'll uh, lead to someone teasing you, or if you tell your friend that you have this irrational fear of ducks, that might lead to certain consequences. Um, and suddenly you have to rebuild and reconsider the words you say, the slang you put into your vocabulary. You start shoehorning things in like, dude. That wasn't very natural until you're about seven, eight years old, or, or you know. Um, or you do things like you're suddenly conscious of how many straps of my backpack should I put on? 
which shoulder should it hang off of? Um, you start creating this persona that is um, a little less than natural. And the thing is, this just keeps snowballing until your adulthood. And you, you learn to navigate the social hierarchy by knowing which statements and which expressions um, can uh, lead to whatever upward mobility. And um, as a documentary filmmaker, when I sit down with people, this is something that I have to break through. Because you've, you've put on all these layers, like calluses, or like a, like a pharaoh's tomb, you know? Your, your little shriveled up old self in bandages, surrounded by all these awards and highlights and Twitter bios and Instagram bios and LinkedIn um, highlights. And, and uh, to me, I want to break through. I want to get a real sense of who this person is when I sit them down. Um, but it's difficult. So, when I do an interview, um, I'm aware of this. I know that when someone sits down, they can't just start blurting out a bunch of cool insight that I can chuck into a movie. And when you tell someone to just, just be honest, it's about as tactful as saying, just take your top off. Um, so honesty, it's, it can take a little buildup. It can be, um, you know, when, it, when Trevor goes, goes up on stage, there's a whole routine. No one just goes up on stage and goes, mm, hi, I'm Tiffany. Okay, roll, roll, roll the bills. It, it's no, there's a, there's a whole um, routine. It's a story unraveling. You see, you start with the things that everyone else has seen. You've seen the knees, the elbows, and then with patience, yeah, you see the rest. And um, that's how it is when I do these interviews. Also like, also like nudity, you realize that being honest becomes a lot more difficult when there's a camera involved. Um, even more so when there's a bunch of lights and smelly crew members standing around. So when I uh, um, interview these individuals, whether it's a circus performer or a chef or a taxi driver or a food vendor, um, I'm aware of all this. And I'm aware especially of power dynamics. So, okay, let's skip that one. Honesty needs safe spaces. When I talk to someone, I try to make sure that um, we f they are not threatened, they are not intimidated, that they don't feel that they're in fear, that they're trying to serve me. Because when, when I try to get a good interview, um, and, and they think that I'm superior, they are more likely to give answers that they think they're supposed to give. Like someone at a principal's office. So uh, I would do something like I would sit beside them, or I would get to know them well before cameras ever turn on. Um, for, for this one, for example, I did a series of um, short documentaries and taxi drivers in Manila, and uh, I would sit down and we'd drive around and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything, I wouldn't turn on the camera, we'd just talk, we'd just share a few stories. And, and when, I, when I enter that space, the power dynamic is, you know, I'm, so ta dra taxi drivers in Manila are, they're not paid well at all. Um, they go through a whole heaps of abuse and, they, and, uh, and I, in comparison, come from a place of privilege. Um, and especially in the Philippines where um, social hierarchies are very prevalent. They'll call me sir and so on. But then, so it took time for me to break, to sort of break down those walls and earn his trust. And later on, um, you know, we're just sitting side by side. I'm not in the back seat. I'm just treating him like another human being. And later on, after about half an hour driving around, he was able to open up and tell me about this um, somewhat dire situation that he was in. Um, none of this is to say that you can't get a raw, um, authentic statement with a bunch of um, gear, you know, camera and lights around. Um, and this next one, let's see. Hey, there you go. Um, this one, as you can see, it's, it's you got lights in the back. Uh, you got, you got, I had a, I had two cameras. I had one crew member uh, moving one camera around. So it was definitely, it was really a, you know, an elaborate setup. It was definitely not like the taxi where I just like basically glued it on the window. Um, this one with, with this chef, I got to know him well before we even started talking, we, before we even started this uh, documentary. And leading up to um, 
these statements, this quote about his, how the intimacy of his food, um, I would use things like humor. Humor is an important one, because when you laugh at the same thing, it gives the signal that you come from the same place. When you both get the same joke, in essence, it means you both get each other. And that's what I do, and it's especially true when I use self-deprecating humor, because a person is not going to expose their humanity until they see some of your own. So, honesty needs safe spaces. Now, so that's what it is when it comes to um, receiving honesty from someone. Um, but I'm sure, as a lot of people here are artists, you would be concerned with the expression of honesty. Um, and this too is worth discussing, especially now in an era where we have leaders who have been put up in, put in their positions because they tell it as it is. We all know someone who will drop this um, offensive comment and then justify it with, I'm just saying what everyone else is thinking. Uh, which is kind of ridiculous, because we could have all eaten the same b batch of bad chili, but that by no means means that I want to hear or smell what you put out. And so when it comes to um, expressing honesty, you can't lead with, depending on your message, you can't necessarily lead with it. Um, you gotta do everything you can to sort of make sure the person's on board. Like let's say with, with um, a relationship, you know, you may have a perfectly good potential connection, um, but for some people, you know, it's a little, uh, a little more difficult. Sometimes you don't have the, uh, you don't have, you didn't win the genetic lottery, you can't just like dive right in, you know, people aren't like um, anxious to take your clothes off. So some people it's a little less uh, savory. Um, in the same way that in art, we carry messages, right? That sort of thing, that's what art is, we communicate. And sometimes these messages are a little harder to accept. And um, you can't lead with that. In the same way that when you're getting to know someone, even if it is, uh, you'll end up there. You can't lead with your, with your nudity. Um, so honesty is in, is in the same vein, in that before you drop that statement, however beautiful or or important or moving it might be, you need to make sure that you've won them over. And that's where a craft lies. For example, the movie Whiplash, right? Um, the whole message of that film is destruction may lead to isolation and self, uh, sorry, ambition may lead to isolation and self-destruction. But then before that message is even delivered, you are enthralled by great acting and writing and cinematography and editing. Um, and that's what we have to do. And basically, honesty, like our bodies, needs a consent. Um, I know there's like this, uh, this whole thing about artists want to be raw and real, but I think if, if you immediately start with a message that um, brings their guard up, that's a, I feel like that's a waste of a perfectly good message. Um, so that is, that is an example. Um, all right, how do I play this? <laughs> this one? Okay. So here's a documentary made about a circus performer um, a few years ago, and this is about near the end. People are very, very eager to know when I'm going to stop doing this. But in other professions, they don't ask people that. Yeah, I guess it's scary. You never know if you're going to get the next gig or the next show. Um, I guess I fear the disappointment that I would feel if that were to happen. Um, probably I fear my mental state more than something physically happening. I know what to do about a torn muscle, you know. I don't know how to deal with what happens if I, you know, never get another show or what happens when I need to accept that that's it, you know. Um, because I don't know myself outside of doing things like this. I don't know myself having a desk job, and that worries me. All right. Um, so 
that uh, that documentary is like about this circus performer, and when I pitched it, when people when it started, it's sort of you get this impression like, oh, the circus is gonna be magical, it's gonna be enchanting, but it ends with a note that is a little more on the on um, melancholy side, and before reaching that note, for it to for that message to be effective, for that to really land, I had to earn the audience's trust, I had to earn their consent through visuals through letting them get to know the girl Megan and being charmed by her inside and seeing her performances and so on. Um, so again, honesty, like our naked na nakedness, needs safe spaces and consent. Now here's another question. Um, why is it that sometimes it's easier to be honest with a total stranger than with a close friend? Once again, I pose this question on Instagram, and I ask people if any of them have been honest with a stranger more than they have with their friends, and 85% of them said yes. Um, I've been pondering upon this, and to me it's sort of, um, when you're honest with a stranger, when you, we share a vulnerable moment, a, a, when you confide in them, you know, you meet someone at a bar or a party, and you, and you let that, you get the sense of release but you don't have to deal with the repercussions. You don't have to deal with the consequences of them carrying that around. They're not gonna bring it back around to you. So essentially, it's the emotional equivalent of a one-night stand. Um, it's convenient, I get it, I get it. I get it. it's like the, uh, the hookup culture of our, of our uh, interior lives. Um, and this is a dynamic that I've, that's, I've found to be really um, fascinating. Because that's something that I've been playing with um, when I put out these. Uh, when you all enter, there's a st stack of cards. I don't know how many of you got them and tried playing with them. But um, I took a lot of the questions I used to use for these, uh, for my documentary work, and I put them in this. Um, I made a collection on my computer, and, and I wondered, what do I want to do with this? And I figured, I want to create, I want to put them in this other package. I decided on a pack of cards, like playing cards, because it's familiar, it's approachable. Everyone's played with it, with a shuffled, you know, a deck of cards before. So in essence, this form is its own safe space. And the act of asking someone to pick a card is its own form of asking for consent. And I've, and I've tried it. I've traveled around and um, I would go up to people, strangers, and ask them to pick a card and answer one and created this little gallery um, on Instagram, and it's shocking sometimes what people are willing to reveal about themselves. Like this guy, I, this was within minutes of meeting, uh, he picked a question about whether or not he handles conflict like his mom or his dad, and he ended up sharing a story about his abusive upbringing and how he and his mom dealt with a violent husband and father. Um, and that to me was surprising, and, and I told him, like, I don't have to publish this, and he was like, no, actually, it, it, this is the purpose of this game, right? This is what, I, what we want to do, this is what the, cult, the kind of culture we want to spread. I was like, all right. Um, and this same idea I've been trying to play with um, on a larger scale, I've been putting together these events um, once a month called uh, Skip the Small Talk, where we take these cards and everyone gets one and we use them. We, we impose rules where you're not supposed to talk about work or school, the news or the weather. And um, as you all had to do this morning, everyone's told to write with their weaker hand. Um, because in essence, we're creating this space where I break down those layers that we've built up since puberty. Take away all those like LinkedIn highlights and, and excerpts from our hypothetical Wikipedia pages. And also, it's just hard to look cool when you've got like preschool handwriting on your chest. <laughs> So I've been doing that, and it started about around August, and it was essentially a, this experiment. I didn't know how it was gonna go. Um, about 50 or so people showed up. Um, we had no idea if people were gonna have their guards up, they were gonna think it was total bullshit, and then walk away. But, so when it happened, when it started, I would walk around and sort of eavesdrop on these conversations, and I, could, I would listen in and hear people who most of them came in as strangers. Uh, a few of them came with one or two friends, but most of them didn't know anyone. Um, but within minutes of starting, 
and of course, this was after establishing like this is what conversation is, is what listening should be, creating a real, um, establishing a, an atmosphere where they feel safe to be vulnerable. Um, after the official start, within minutes, I could hear people talk about their dreams and anxieties, and, and um, this one woman in this one table was weeping, and uh, while everyone else was listening to her story, and uh, that shocked us. That shocked. Uh, I mean, my, the other organizers were in like, wow, this thing worked. And then for a, for a second when I was thinking about this, I wondered, does this send my whole talk crumbling to the ground? Um, but, it, but when I think about it, all this was only possible because of an established safe space and because of this collective consent. And honesty, whether you are, um, you are allowed to be your most real self, or whether someone is completely honest with you, is a surrender of power, and that's where the power lies. And just like nakedness, just like when someone sheds their clothes off, it is an act that takes an amount of courage, takes trust, and it is something that we should respond with gratitude, and respect. And so, can I be 100% honest with you? <laughs> you all have been such a great audience, and it's been an honor to share my insight with you. Thank you. We got a hand over there. Yes, Anna. I'm gonna ask you what the question that I got that I got when I entered was, what's the thing you're the most proud of, like, in the last period? So... I asked that question? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> have you been the most proud of yourself oh. in the last few months? I mean, this, that one's kind of obvious, like, putting out these cards and starting these events and sort of, and seeing people genuinely make these connections and um, make friends. Like, I'm super proud of that. It's kind of surreal. Um, yeah, like when we did an event in Berlin, it, uh, people stuck around for hours after the official end time, and I could well, I could see them like exchanging numbers and Facebook info. Um, I'm yeah, I'm thrilled about that. I'm still waiting for that one day when I get an email of someone thanking me because they ended up meeting someone that they ended up marrying. That'd be cool. Everyone <laughs> 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 else got a, a question. All right, over in the back. Uh, what was your personal motivation to study? Which one? Uh, to work on bringing uh, people bringing contact with each other? Or? Um, huh, that is a good question. I guess, okay, yeah, um, she asked what my personal motivation was to, uh, to do this thing where I get people to connect with each other. Um, and maybe, Maybe it has to do with moving around a lot. I, I lived in Manila, then I moved to California, then I went on again, then I live here, and I've also, in between, done a lot of traveling, and um, I'm always coping with the shifting concept of home and belonging. Um, so that's one. And, and also, also, I guess, like a personal like frustration with small talk in itself, just hearing the same script over and over again, or even like giving the same script over and over again, and sort of, I would like to have um, a moment that actually sticks, as opposed to, all right, like, essentially the same thing as exchanging business cards every day. And um, yeah, and that's really it. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, uh, you in the blue. Uh How do I film it yeah, after they vote the document, you know, because sometimes they will tell you something, but then they don't want to maybe repeat it, like to film it or something. Right. Yeah, no, that's, that, that happens, where um, I, I talk to someone in the, uh, the pre-interview and they reveal something, um, and then when it comes to 
shooting time, they don't talk about it, which is just fine, honestly. Like, I, I still, you have to, as, as a filmmaker, I have to be responsible um, and assure them that if they're at any point they want to retract something, they, they have total, you know, all the rights to do so. The same thing with the cars and stuff on Instagram. Um, but if it is something I feel is essential, like I will sort of uh, try to push for it. I would, I would say something like, oh, you mentioned the other, when we were talking, that you still feel somewhat responsible for your parents splitting up, something like that. Um, but also, you know, I, I'll share some of my own, you know, like they, they um, like, you know, it's weird when someone is naked and then the other person is like, has got everything still on. Um, so I try to be, to have it like bounce back and forth. Like if they're getting into a zone where they're sharing something extremely um, personal, I will have some of my own to share as well. So that's, that definitely helps. But if they're really guarded, it either takes much more time or it's just, it's just not gonna happen. And sometimes you gotta accept it. So uh, we got a few more, remember a bunch of, uh, or that, yeah. same stuff um, vulnerability uh, being vulnerable gives others permission to be vulnerable as well um, just as I was saying a, like a minute ago um, it's it's definitely a bold step you know it's scary because we've all been too honest at some point and either we've been hurt or we've hurt someone else and we have we grow these like reflexes to uh, they'll be a little more guarded um, and sometimes someone just has to to dive into it and then sort of um, let everyone else feel like, well, he did that and he survived, and maybe I can too. Um, but obviously it varies per person. Some people have a lot more layers than others. Um, you got a question over this one? Yeah. Um, when you're in a situation in which part of what you want is the other person to open up, then you share some of your vulnerability in a calculated way. Is that honest? Ooh, that's a really good question. <laughs> that's a very good question, actually. Um, let's see. In a calculated honesty, is that 100% honest? Hmm. Strategic honesty. Right? Because that does, I gotta admit, I've done it. <laughs> I definitely have like stories in my back pocket. Um, but I'd say to a degree, Probably not, probably not. I've, I've definitely been in situations where I would share something and, and people would get the assumption, uh, the impression that, whoa, that's super, um, that's super personal of you. And then also in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, hey, but I've told like 100 other people. So, <laughs> so it's probably in a blog somewhere. <laughs> so no, I'll admit it's not 100% honest, but for the purpose, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> And I gotta reckon with that. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. And do you sell these cards? Oh yeah. Okay. Number one, you everyone who received a card, you can keep that card, put it in your pocket, give it to someone. As sorry, going conversation. Number two, um, yeah, they're available. Um, I got like five in my backpack, but um, they're available online. There's a little website on the bottom of the back, and uh, let's see. Locally, the American Book Center has it. The Gamekeeper, I think, has some. And then this other like board game spot in Harlem or Klein. Oh, they just sold out, so I, I gotta get, refill their stock. Um, but they're out there. Um, anyone else? Okay, you in the orange. Um, how do you respond with gratitude when someone's honesty hurts you? Ooh, dang. Okay, so that takes a while. First you walk, walk for a bit, get coffee. <laughs> you know? Just acknowledge your own hurt. Don't. There's no need to be like the stoic superstar, 
and just be like, mm-hmm, thanks for piercing my heart. No, <laughs> um, you, you gotta be, um, it honestly takes time, you know? It, it's, if someone is just like completely blunt, if you find that it is a, it was inappropriate, then you also have to address that. Um, but I think you sort of have to step back a little bit and swallow your pride, and, and if what they had brought up is valid, and if you feel that the intention is to move forward as opposed to break you down, then you have to be grateful that they respect you enough and expect that you are strong enough to sort of survive that little blow. Because in the same way that, um, you know, if a, if a couple is too polite, if they don't fight, it's a sign that they haven't reached a certain depth in their connection, you know? Because um, then you sort of have to like, test those boundaries a little bit, like if you're just being, um, if, if a couple goes like, we're never gonna fight again, then you've sort of surrendered to the idea that your relationship is too fragile to survive friction. Um, but it definitely takes time. I, if someone did that, I would, if it was really hurtful, I'd get dessert first, <laughs> I mean, a little pie or something, and then talk about it and be like, you know what, that was cool of you, we, we're solid. But it's funny enough, like, I, some of my best friends, you know, we've started with big, with big fights. My childhood friend, our first day of getting to know each other, we, had, we got into this fight, and then the day after we were like, oh, we're both into the same action figures, I guess we can put yesterday past this. <laughs> All right, we got, I, I remember a few more hands. Uh, you were there. Okay, yes. At the same time, you see a lot of people being fake and airbrushed and everything. Um, just curious what your thoughts on that are, what your observations are when it comes to Instagram or social media in general, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think, I think it's a pretty basic take, but I, um, yeah, all the super airbrushed um, posts, super filtered. Like, I, I know this one guy I used to work with. Whenever he posts selfies, there are just like so many layers of, uh, of filters on his face, like his cheeks would make like a baby's bottom jealous. It was unreal. Um, people would call him out on it. And he was just like, "Nah," but I got a mark on myself. Um, I think I think there's a certain degree of like unhealthiness that it puts out because it definitely it's always a cycle of comparison. But at the same time, on the extreme end of extreme of extreme honesty, and just being like, "Look at my," you know. Um, um, Sometimes, like what I was saying, like if you lead with that, people will get their guards up and be a little less receptive. Um, especially if you're, if it's like a, let's say a very political post. Um, you may get a lot of responses, you may get a lot of like, yeah, you go. Um, but often it'll be from people who already agree with you to begin with. So I think there's a means of finessing um, your way towards your honesty. It's, you know, as much as it, as comfortable as it is to be, the same way that it would be great to be naked all the time, you can't be, it would be great to be honest all the time, but you gotta navigate everyone else's feelings. Um, so that's sort of my take. Um, I got a few more, a uh, bunch more. Uh, you were there. Um, okay. when, it, when it comes to like networking events, it's exactly like what you said, it's about um, small talk, it's about business talk, business card talk. Do you think that it's possible to like kind of steer away from that kind of business card talk to a you know more personal talk, or does it actually depend on the context and the safe environment? Do you think that when you when, you know when we go to a normal networking event, is it is that possible, or is it only possible when it's a really safe environment like the no small talk event where people know that's exactly what you're there to do? Do you okay. have any tips for? So if it's, you're asking if it's possible to have the same sort of exchange outside an, an environment where it's imposed to have a certain kind of connection. Yeah, and also do you have any tips to move away from small talk in you know, typical networking events? Mm, yeah, uh, I, I think it's possible. It's a little hard when everyone's agenda is to sort of advance their careers. I mean, it's such a, when I lived in LA, that was the thing. That was the, the LA introduction is, oh, hi, what's your name? What do you do? Who do you know? How can you advance my career? Like, that was the exchange. Oh, let's exchange emails. Let's collaborate. <laughs> like, God, it was so good networking with you last week. Let's network again. <laughs> it's, 
is so crap. So over it. Um, no, but to, to, to sort of shift it, it's hard because you got you got to be creative with your questions. You got to be creative with, um, as opposed to like, oh, what do you do? You maybe you could shift it towards like, what are you actually passionate about? Like, when you got a free weekend, how do you think you'd spend it? Or when was the last time you did something where you completely lost track of time? And then they'd think, oh, actually, it has nothing to do with with um, producing. It has more to do with learning piano or whatever. Or um, so it's more of that. And when you you gotta throw them off their game a little bit, which is the puzzle I've been trying to solve for years. Um, all right, we got one over here. Um, well, you were mentioning about like the to be honest and like to expose yourself. You know, uh, but I think like mostly like in society now mutilates the the the, um, the honesty. Um, my question would be is like how do you see this mutilation? Or in like nowadays if you say something like oh you are like uh, homophobic or you are whatever, so you cannot really express your total honesty without causing these like lying. So how do you um, go to the full honesty without um, giving the wrong uh, impression of you? Of you? Yeah, um, no, okay. So the question is, how do you deal with... Uh, how do you, how do you um, create that environment in a, in a space that people could express all that honesty without uh, being you, let's say like that? Right. Does everyone feel very offended when you say something uh, honest? Right. And, and they just like, oh, you are like a totally whatever. Uh, how, do you, how do you create that space? Um, it's possible to create that. Yeah, create a space when you're completely honest with it, you're, you're, you're uh, protected from possibly mean comments or condemnation and so on. Um, I mean, that's, um, that's sort of the state of things. We learned to. We start learning to hide our honesty when, when someone else's honesty supersedes ours. Um, when, let's say, yeah, you say something, a comment that is um, taken as homophobic or whichever, um, for example, or offensive. Here's the thing with honesty, though. You have, you have all the right to say it, but that doesn't make you immune to consequences. Because the thing is, on their end, they feel honest enough to sort of stand up for their values. And that's tough. And like, and it's a matter of just like being able to read the room and, and, and sort of being aware of like the state of, of, um, of the, the exchange of information. Um, and I think it's a matter of, like what I've been saying a while ago, like you, you also just go, sort of, there are definitely topics and words and, and opinions that are less accepted now, but you can ease, I, build, I do believe you can ease your way into it. Um, and that's just, that's just your craft. You can't just be like, you know what, um, you know, it's as un un uncomfortable as someone sitting right by, you meet some, like this morning, you would meet someone and be like, oh, hi, I'm Miguel, and um, I, and I, and say something to you like, I think about um, wetting my bed every day. Like, you can't just start with that. Um, you can't, you... It is tough with the internet because your exposure to judgment is exponentially higher than it was before. And oh, you, just gotta, you just gotta deal with it. You just gotta like learn how to, learn how to be, use your wit, use um, if you're a graphic designer, like use incredible visuals to grab someone's attention first before slipping in your agenda, you know what I mean? Um, but at the same time, if you know, if you're aware that what you say could be a little um, catatonic, you, know, um, you just gotta be sort of ready for the response as well. That's just how it is. Uh, over there. Yeah, there's too many. One okay. or one two questions. Okay, one or two. Yeah, if, if we're speaking about honesty, for sure, you probably get uh, people who say, yeah, you know, Miguel, you actually, I, I believe your project will not work. Oh, sorry? Yeah, I like, uh, oh, like you yeah. know, people who are doubting, and they will say, no offense, but I believe it will not work for something. How do you deal with these people? Or Are you talking about, like, my case personally, when people yeah, ask maybe, me? Yeah, uh, this project or, or in general. Project before, how do you deal with 
deal with people who say, I want to be honest, I, I think, uh, I don't know, it's not good. I say, I'll be honest, I think you suck. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, of course not. No, I, I dig a little deeper. I, I just ask, like, where, where does that come from? Maybe if it is a place of insecurity, then that's something worth looking into. Or maybe it's a place of concern. Maybe it's someone like, well, I don't think you should be putting in investing this money because I believe this, this, and this because I know you as that. Um, it's... Yeah, you just got to keep that conversation going, sort of find out but from what place they're coming from. And uh, I'll be honest with your response, too. Um, so that's it. <laughs> Over there. Yeah, earlier you were talking about friends and uh, your friends, and also about how you be, uh, it's easier to be honest with a stranger. Sometimes, aren't you afraid that uh, people uh, that you work with on your project are more honest with you than your close one? Sorry? Uh, I Aren't you uh, sometimes afraid that uh, the people you are working with, the strangers you are working with on your project, are more honest with you than your close ones? Are the strangers who are more are more honest with me than my close friends? Hmm, it's totally possible. Because <laughs> I'm also aware that, like, yeah, I'm the the level of honesty I have with, does vary per person. So it's definitely more than likely that my friends have the same way. And I, I don't. I wouldn't say I'm afraid of that necessarily. Um, I'm aware of it, and depending on the friend, I would I try to shift it towards something a little more genuine. But at the same time, it's not going to keep me up at night because you don't have to be. Not everyone has to reach a. Not every relationship or friendship you have has to reach a point where you're like. 100% naked with each other, you know? It's just, you gotta be careful with your intimacies, too, because that's, that's vulnerability, you know? Okay, do we have more? Or we have more? Uh, I've got a question myself. Yes, absolutely. So out of all the questions in your deck, uh, do you have a favorite? Ooh, I got a few, it does vary. One was what I brought up earlier, it's like when, at w my current favorite now is like, at what point did you become aware of the concept of cool, and how did that affect the way you live? Because it always brings up the most embarrassing stories of everyone's shitty hairstyles, <laughs> tasted music, and, and so on. Like, that's always interesting. Um, it varies, but right now, that would be my pick. 